Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a natural log equation with complex numbers. Now this equation is homemade which means I came up with the idea but anyone can come up with an idea like this. Just think about how you can complicate or complexify things, right? Obviously, and if you have any ideas, let us know in the comment section. You can always submit problems just by adding it in the comments or there's a form which I rarely look at, but time to time I'll check it out if I remember. Anyways, so we have this equation ln of z plus i equals 1 plus i, and we're going to be solving for z. So is it possible to extract z from this equation? And I'll be presenting two methods, and I think this equation is kind of fun, because when I show you the first method, you're going to realize it's so much fun, right? Hopefully you feel the same way, and please let me know, let us know. Great, so for our first method, we're going to go ahead and set z equal to a plus bi for two reasons. One, this solves the problem. Two, it's the name of this channel. Isn't that cool? a plus bi. So hopefully you'll remember that. Now, we're going to be natural logging this, but let's go ahead and find z plus i first. This is a plus bi plus i, and I can definitely express it as b plus 1 being the imaginary part, right? So we have a new complex number. You can call it w if you want, no big deal. But my goal is to solve for z, so I need to find a and b. Make sense? Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and natural log this number in standard form. How do you natural log a complex number? Let's talk about it. It's better if it's in polar form because it's a lot easier. So let's go ahead and try to write this as r times e to the i theta. Thanks to Euler, we have something called the polar form. E is Euler's number because Euler is awesome. He is the awesomest, in my opinion. <laughs> anyway, so how do we turn this into that polar form? And what happens if we do? So first, let's look at what happens with the natural log. If you natural log a polar form, this becomes ln r plus i times theta. And in general, in general, you can write this as ln r plus i times theta plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Why? Because you can add multiples of 2 pi, and notice that e to the power 2 pi n i is 1, so you can basically multiply this by that, it won't change the answer, because this is 1 in the complex world, okay? Cool, cool. Now, here's what we have. We're going to go ahead and find r n e theta. So in other words, I want to turn this standard form into a polar form. How can I do that? Okay, here's how you can do it. R is the modulus or the absolute value, so the absolute value of the left hand side is the square root of real part squared plus imaginary part squared. Got it? Easy. And what about the theta? Well, I don't know theta directly, but I know tangent theta is y over x, so the imaginary part divided by the real part. By the way, if you are not familiar with these concepts, you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made nine videos on basics of complex numbers. I also have another channel where I do problems on algebra, number theory, a little bit of geometry. I'll try to do more. And that's my other channel. Go ahead and check it out. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, we have these two things. What can I do with those? I need theta. So can I just extract theta from here? Maybe, possibly, probably, theta is equal to r tangent b plus 1 over i say possibly because you know there's different values depending on the quadrants but let's keep it simple for now and leave it at that okay we can deal with complications if they arise later so that's theta that's r i got everything i need so why don't you make halwa right okay some of you may not know what it means but look it up and you'll hopefully find it so here's what we have z or I shouldn't say z, right? This is not z. This number, complex number, is equal to r, which is this, times e to the i theta, and theta is arctangent b plus 1 over a. How complicated this is, right? This is what makes it fun, in my opinion, because look at this. This is crazy, isn't it? But don't worry. We know what the right-hand side is equal to, right? I mean, isn't this 1 plus i? 
No, it's log is one plus i. Oh, okay. Otherwise, it would be like, oh, set this equal to one plus i and you're done. No, no, no. It's not that easy. It is easy, but you'll see. So now, let's go ahead and natural log both sides. So ln and the ln. When you ln the right-hand side, left-hand side, we already know. The left right-hand side, which is going to be the left-hand side now, is going to be ln of this. Sorry, my squares are sometimes weird plus i times this guy over here, the theta, right? The infamous theta. And guess what? This is equal to 1 plus i. Uh-oh, this is the best part. Look at that. This is 1, and this is 1. Beautiful, right? Let's go ahead and see what that means. First of all, if this is equal to 1, and how did I get that? Uh, two complex numbers are equal. If the real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are equal, that's how I got it, right? So this is equal to 1, which means I can do e. So this is equal to e, Euler's number. And if you square both sides, we're going to get something amazing. e is squared. Yay. So that's one of the equations I'm going to use. Okay. The second one is going to come from the imaginary part. Arctangent something something, right? Arctangent b plus 1 over a is equal to 1. What does that mean? 1 in radians, by the way. you got to be careful. Everything should be in radians. So if you tan both sides, like, uh, you're going to get tan of arc tan, which is b plus 1 over a, is tangent 1. Again, 1 is not in degrees. It's in radians. Okay? Just be careful about that. So now, what do you do? <laughs> well, we could probably cross-multiply. And then guess what? This equation will be along with this equation. What, are, what is the other one? Uh-oh, I see in b plus 1. Let's replace b plus 1. So now I have this. Let me copy that equation here because you may not see it. Now I'm going to replace b plus 1 with a tan 1. Isn't that nice? This is what makes this problem fun because it's easily solvable. Look at that. It's not too hard, right? Factor out a squared. You're going to get 1 plus tangent squared 1. There's a lot of trigonometric identities. That's also another reason why I call this fun. And then I can kind of divide by that, right? That should be the answer. But guess what? Tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. So I'm going to use that identity. And then make a common denominator. E is a constant, by the way. Remember that. This is going to become cosine squared 1 plus sine squared 1 divided by cosine squared 1. Uh-oh. This is 1. So this becomes... A squared equals, oops, I can't write an A. E squared divided by, nope. E squared divided by 1 over cosine squared, so I'm just going to write it as E squared cosine squared 1. Nice. I know E squared, so I can find E. I mean, I know A squared, so I can find A by square rooting both sides. Hopefully, this is positive, right? If it's negative, then you'll buy the negative solution. You can test it out. This is my A, and B plus 1 is A times tangent 1. So b plus 1 is just going to be this times tangent 1, which I can write as sine 1 over cosine 1. Look at that. Cancel that out, and b becomes e, let me write it here, e sine 1 minus 1. Uh-oh, I got the answer. Let's go ahead and put it together. So now our z is going to be a plus bi, which is e cosine 1 plus i times e sine 1 minus 1. So that's the answer. Wow, that's interesting, right? Don't you think? But let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method you'll like better. It's probably more interesting. Okay, here we go. Ln z plus i equals 1 plus i. Some of you are going to be like, oh, I did it in 30 seconds. I used the second method. Okay, fine. Good. Good for you. e to the power ln z plus i is e to the power 1 plus i. Look at this. e to the power ln something is something. So this is z plus i equals e to the power 1 times e to the i, subtract i, and you're done. z equals e times e to the i minus i. But well, wait a minute. They're not the same. Oh, don't worry about it. Euler's formula comes to the rescue. And this becomes z equals e times e to the i is, this is 1 times i, i theta. e to the i theta is cosine theta. Again, this is all in the lecture notes. You can check it out. Cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this will be cosine 1 plus i sine 1 minus i. And you can include the i in the imaginary part, and you will get the exact same solution. And let's see what Wolfram Alpha gives us. Ta-da-da-da. -da -da. Yes, the same answer as we found. And 
This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.